And Elvis Presley said, thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much. And three weeks later, I was a millionaire. Elvis helps to make you at 25 or 26 a very wealthy man. Um, how did you and Elvis hook up? I had a dream one night, and I used to keep a pen. I still do keep a pen and a pencil at my bedside. And I got up and I wrote, Jerry Weintraub presents Elvis at Madison Square Garden. And I woke my wife up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I said, look at this. And I showed it to her. And she said, do you know Elvis Presley? I said, and I would, you know, I was nobody then. I was doing a few little shows at the Brooklyn Paramount. And she said, do you know Elvis Presley? I said, no. She said, well, how are you going to present Elvis Presley at Madison Square Garden? I said, I'm going to present Elvis Presley at Madison Square Garden. She said, why don't you go to sleep? It's 3 o'clock in the morning, and you get up at 4.30 as it is. You're crazy. I went back to sleep, got up in the morning, made a couple of phone calls, got Colonel Parker's number. He was Elvis Presley's mm -hmm. manager. And I called him. And I called him, and he said to me, not a chance. I owe people shows if Elvis ever goes back to work. He was kind of retired at the time. And it won't be you. It's not going to be you, son, so forget it. Mm -hmm. I called him every day for one solid year, 364 days. I was very friendly with him on the phone. Never met him. Mm -hmm. Friendly with him on the phone. The 365th day, I didn't have to call him. He called me. And he said to me, do you still want to take Elvis on the road? I said, yes, I do. He said, meet me tomorrow in Las Vegas with a million dollars. And I said, fine, no problem. Now, when I was that age, a million dollars to me was so far, and I can't even mm -hmm. begin to tell you, it was impossible to get a million dollars. thought about Rockefeller having a million dollars, Andrew Carnegie having a million dollars, but not Jerry Weintraub having a million dollars. But there were a lot of people in New York who kept saying to me, you know, kid, I think you got a future. I'd like to invest with you. I'd like to do something with you. Let me know when you want to do something. So I made a beeline for all those guys. Nobody gave me a nickel. So I got on the telephone and started calling people, left, right, and center, trying to get this million bucks to, to bring the Elvis Presley. And I couldn't raise it. I just couldn't raise it. I got, out to, I got on a plane, went to Las Vegas, and I sat in Las Vegas uh, all night on the telephone calling people. And I got to an attorney in New York who got me to a fella in Seattle, Washington, who I didn't know. I never met. And this fellow was an Elvis Presley maniac. And I, he was a businessman. I said, I need a million dollars, and I'm going to have a concert tour with Elvis Presley, and blah, 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 blah. And make a long story short, the next day, he wired me a million dollars without a contract, just on a verbal deal on the telephone. This man wired me a million dollars. And he said, I heard about this Presley thing. I like it. He said, how much money do you need? I said, I need a million dollars. He said, what will I get for the million dollars? I said, you get half of my concert company. He said, I, let's make this clear. I get half of your concert company and the Elvis Presley tours for a million dollars. I said, yes. He said, okay, I like it. Send your lawyers to Seattle. and They can meet with my lawyers and we'll figure out a deal. And I said, wait a minute, Mr. Smith, you don't understand something. He said, what? I said, I need the million dollars in three hours or I'm not going to have a deal. I don't have time for lawyers. I said, first of all, I don't have any lawyers. I said, and second of all, I don't have time for lawyers to go to Seattle and negotiate and make a deal. So he said to me, you know what? I like you. I want to do it. And he wired me a million dollars to Las Vegas, which is a whole story, which will take this whole segment. We don't need to get that. And I went to, got the million, went over the uh, International Hotel in Las Vegas, met Colonel Parker. He was at the roulette table. We went upstairs and we talked about a deal. I didn't know how to make a deal because this it was unprecedented. And I had sold half of my concert company. Of course, I didn't have a concert mm -hmm. company, so I was selling half of nothing, you know, <laughs> which was pretty good and pretty persuasive. Yeah. And he ended up making tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars with the company, so he didn't find. Wow. Anyway, we, he took me up to see Elvis, and we talked about the deal first before we went up to see Elvis. And he didn't know what to ask for, and I didn't know what to ask for, because this was unprecedented territory. 
never been done before. No one had ever taken a concert tour into arenas. I did it for the first time. So we, I kind of waited it out, and I talked to him a little bit more, and he said, how about 50-50? I said, 50-50, that sounds okay. It's okay with me. He said, okay, Elvis and I will take 50%, you take 50%. I said, great. I didn't realize what that meant mm -hmm. to, to me, you know, that I was going to become a multimillionaire in no time. And he took me up to see Elvis. I met Elvis. And Elvis said to me, I have two requests, only two requests. I said, what is that? And he called me sir. He was three years older than me, and he called me sir. He said, number one, every seat in the arena when I sing has to be full. That's very important to me. And the most important thing to me is all the first 20 rows have my fans, not big shots. I don't care if the governor comes. I don't care if the mayor comes. I don't care if the president comes. If anybody wants to come and bring me an award, tell them to leave it at the box office. I'm not interested in any of that stuff. I'm interested in singing for my fans. And I need them in the front because they give me energy and they make me work better and sing better. And I said, you got it. It's no problem. But... On the first show that I did with Presley, I booked him in Miami Beach, Florida, on July the 4th. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in Miami Beach, Florida, on July 4th weekend, but it's quite humid, and most of the Floridians that have any brains get out of town. They don't want to be there. And But I sold the show out anyway. It was at the convention center, 10,000 seats. And I called down there, and they said, you're sold out. It's just unbelievable. It's fantastic. Jerry, it's a fantastic thing. I said, great. He said, you have a matinee. I said, I'll ask Presley, you know. So I went to see Elvis, and I said, how about a matinee? Great. Let's do a matinee. So I booked a matinee. Oh, he did say, can you sell it out? I said, yes. I got down there. I called them up. They said I was sold out both shows. When I got to Florida, I went right to the building on July 3rd, and there were 5,000 seats left. For the matinee. 5,000 seats left out of 10,000 seats. And I had guaranteed him that every seat would be full. Now remember, that's end of my career. <laughs> Beginning and end in a very short period of time with no millions, no nothing. And the next, that day, the colonel and Elvis came over to the building. And I went to the colonel and I said, Colonel, we have a problem. And he said, We do, son. What's the problem? I said, I have 5,000 seats left for the matinee tomorrow. And he said, son, we don't have a problem. You have a problem. <laughs> so I went outside, took a walk to get some air to say to myself, this can't be the end. It's just the beginning. It can't be the end. And I saw the Miami Beach jail staring me right in the face next to the convention center. And I went into the jail. And I went to the warden, and I said, how many prisoners you got here? He said, I don't know, 300, 400, whatever it was. I said, I need to hire them to come into the Miami Beach Convention Center and take 5,000 seats out of it, put them in the parking lot, cover it over with a tarp, and then I, after the first show, I need them to come back, put the seats back in the convention center so that I have 10,000 seats for the nighttime show. And I did it. And it worked. And the only comment I got about it was when the show was over, I went over to have a drink and a sandwich with Elvis. And I, he said, uh, I said, how'd you like the day? Did you enjoy yourself today? He said, it was great. It was great. Every seats were all full. He said, you know, but the nighttime audiences have much more energy than the daytime. <laughs> there were 5,000 less people. So he kept that million dollars in the drawer, took me up to Elvis's room, knocked on the door, and he said, Elvis, I want you to meet. Mr. Weintraub, he's your promoter. Just gave me a million dollars for you. <laughs> and Elvis Presley said, thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much. And three weeks later, I was a millionaire. After the tour, I became a millionaire. There's choices in life. I made a choice for career and for success. When you make that choice, you give up something. You have to give up something. I worked 24 hours a day and still do seven days a week. I don't know about Saturday or Sunday. I don't know about holidays and vacations. 